Welcome back to Outmaneuver. Today we are doing another tier list video, and this one is for the limited format. Hit that subscribe button to be notified when we drop our common and uncommon rarity tier list for limited. Today we're going to start off in the D tier with Hera. What are our thoughts on Hera? Not good. Yeah, limitedly she's just not good. Uh, I mean, you have to really get a lot of specters to make her really playable here. So you can you can definitely grab. <clears throat> You know, the off color space. Most of the specters are good, right? You want to be playing them Zeb, Kanan. The only ex exception really is Chopper. Yeah. yeah. Most of the other specters you're totally happy to play in your deck. So, I mean, she's like, but during the game, her hero power does absolutely nothing. It's just a very specific deck that you're going to get like maybe once in your entire time playing Sealed or, or Draft in this format. So, she's just kind of not worth. A reminder for everyone in the chat that our tier list here is a cumulative rating. We each have our own tier lists, but we just combined the ratings here to make an average of where each card is on the list. And this is a limited tier list, but we're also including sealed in that, which is why you're going to see Luke and Vader who are not available to draft, but they are available in your pre-release sealed, which is why we're including them here. Let's move on to the C tier now, and we're going to move to our 17th leader ranking, and that's Thrawn. Again, this is another rare leader. This ability is hard to get going right during a game. I mean, I personally never played Thrawn in Limited, right? So the chances of you actually getting him and pulling it off aren't that great in the first place. That's why it's rare. What I will say with Thrawn, though, is he is a 3-9 body that deploys at 6. So his body is a little bit beefy. If you get advanced on, tie advanced on him to make him 5'11", he's a pretty scary boy. He also has the ability to, to control your opponent, and you get to see what's coming up with them. I think his skill cap is pretty high, but overall, I do think he deserves the 17 ranking. Yeah, and, and you'll see, like, going forward, we have a lot of the rare leaders kind of a, a little bit lower than a lot of the common leaders, just for that reason that it is much harder to build a a solid limited deck around these more specific abilities. That doesn't mean that they're bad necessarily. It just is going to be a lot harder to get a consistently good deck. I and mean, Thrawn definitely falls in that category. Let's look at our next rare leader in Grand Inquisitor. Yeah, Grand Inquisitor is kind of in the same boat. He wants very like specific units to work with him, right? These these units with three or less power that can he can damage them and ready them and and go for attacks. And his body is also a little bit on the smaller end as a, at a as a 3 6 for 6 deploy. He's kind of one redeeming factor is that he is like one of the cheaper force leaders. So if you manage to find him plus some really strong force cards, you might be in a good position, but other than that, I feel like he's too specific for for limited. However, in sealed if you're going to run Grand Inquisitor, especially in the pre-release, should say, you can just run Vader. He's going to deploy one later, but he's going to have that same force trait, and he's most of the time going to be much better. Going from one leader, which isn't good in the pre-release because he is usurped by the starter leader, let's move to the next one on our C tier, which is Chewbacca. Chewbacca is an interesting one. I think all three of these other guys rated him substantially lower than I did. I, I thought he was like a, a little bit better shocker. than where he's at right now, but... Definitely um, no personal bias there. Yeah, yeah, no personal bias. But I, I just think that the Sentinel keyword, especially in Limited, is really, really powerful. And so that makes both his actual ability and his his de deploy side much scarier than in Constructed. And I do like that he's it's easier to use him with the the like neutral card. You're going to get a lot of like like only red or only blue right cards, for example, that he works a lot better with compared to some other leaders. So I, I do like him a lot. He does just kind of lack, his ability just lacks like impact, I guess, on the game compared to these, the leaders that we have ranked higher than him. So I, I, I do agree that he, he's not the worst, but he definitely is, is kind of down there. The common thread with all these bottom four leaders is the more requirements, the harder it is to use to pull off. Definitely. Looking at the B tier, we're going to start with Aiden. What are our thoughts on Aiden? So, Aiden, I think, is really a unit where a leader that she comes out and she can really defend well. But I think in Constructed, where she's really strong at, you know, playing Overwhelming Barrage and having and sticking on the board for a turn, a lot of leaders do that better in Limited because there's just less removal. So her shielded ability is a little less strong in Limited than it typically would be in Premier. So I think that's why you see her down here at the bottom as well as she really thrives on having a lot of removal. So unless you're 
pool just happens to have a lot of removal or you draft a lot of removal, her ability to heal one isn't going to be as effective in limited play as it would be in constructed or premier. Yeah, I, I agree, especially with the with the removal point is that she works. She is so strong in premier with with removal and just not having like guaranteed access to the best you know forms of removal in limited does drag her power level down a little bit. And then beside Aiden, we have Chirrut. What are our thoughts on Chirrut? Well, he is the cheapest leader that gives force. So, I mean, if you if you do end up with a Chirrut, you can try to go a force strategy looking for cards like, uh, was it the forces with me? Stuff like that. But again, right, you have to make a kind of a, a specific deck because he is a rare leader. He's less flexible, so he's harder to pull off. Yeah, I really like how they actually did this over the whole like course of the game where like the rare leaders actually are kind of not great in limited unless you draft a specific deck, which yeah. moves are still playable, but they're not like m they're significantly less important than a lot of the common leaders, as you'll see moving forward here. Which I, I like that there's not a power level there because these cards start in play every game. And if you were just got lucky and got the right rare leader that happens to be really good well that doesn't really feel good because he's always going to be able to use that guy against you right it's i think where i see the negative play experience if your opponent's powerful leader that's a rare or legendary potentially kind of warps the game i think where i see chert having difficulties building around is really leveraging that ability to not be defeated right away and in constructed you're going to use cards like jedi lightsaber or it binds all things to make sure he's not at lethal point and those are both rare cards which is hard to use with your rare leader Let, let's look next at our next leader ig88 our second common leader yeah ig is one of those leaders that i think he actually improves in limited because of the lack of removal where in constructed you're going to see a lot of decks have open fire and takedown and everything that can kind of kill him when he first deploys in limited it's less so so you can definitely try to pivot to a more aggressive strategy in limited and really try to uh, win the game quickly before the rest of the leaders uh, get uh, deployed and he's only one of two leaders that actually has five attack which i think is something that is usually overlooked the limited format has limited removal and that's where ig88 does have a chance to shine in a deck because it's going to be less likely to take him out and if they do take him out you probably have a more likely chance of your other card going through and staying on the board and then let's look at our next leader emperor palpatine palpatine is palpatine is an interesting one because he's our only leader to deploy at eight so he doesn't have a super big impact like early on and his ability also requires you to sacrifice your own units which I've found so far in limited is not really what you want to be doing. So, but, but the thing is, is he's just so strong and he just generates card advantage. And if you do make it to his deploy turn, then he's provides an incredibly powerful swing, a massive body that is just going to be on the board for most likely the rest of the game. And it just makes it things really difficult for your opponent. So I, Palpatine is pretty solid. And then if you were able to get ramp cards, I think that's where he starts to, his power level goes up quite a bit. And he becomes a much more solid pick at limited. Yeah, if you can get a ramp with this guy, it's a little absurd. And I think specifically his power level is going to be a bit higher in sealed, where games typically tend to be a little bit slower. And Palpatine excels at just out dominating the other decks that try to go slow or try to go to the, the end game. And he, and he's one of the rare leaders that I think actually can be like oh you know you have the, a rare palpatine you have a bunch of a few ramp cards it can feel a bit oppressive to play against especially in a sealed environment it should be noted that this leader in particular had our widest variance one person had him at five one person had him at 17. so this is somewhere in the middle of that and it's just interesting the difference of opinion you can get on a leader yeah i don't think palpatine's that good i mean and sealed fine, you can kind of get away with it, but I don't think he's a playable character in draft at all. I think he's just too slow, and you you don't have the proper removal tools to deal with some of the aggro decks that would be in the format. So I would try to steer clear with Palpatine for draft. Sealed, like I I sure I can I can agree with that that he's better. I still don't think he's great. I'd rather play Darth Vader in my sealed than Palpatine if I'm getting a bunch of ramps. So 
because he comes out earlier and he impacts the board better without having and he has a better ability on him it's more consistent so e tip just pull a sneak attack dj super laser and a re- resupply and then an atst and atst turn three is really good checks out let's move on to our next leader cassian we're in the middle of our tier list approximately so what do we think about cassian which makes him average so C- cassian is a cassian is a rare leader so like like the other rare leaders we've seen his his ability is a bit more specific but i feel like out of kind of all the rare leaders his is his is one of the easiest to leverage and he he just basically if you hit their base for three damage this turn you get to spend one and draw a card and i feel like as long you know you don't want to mill yourself but since you only have a 30 card deck in this format but card advantage is really good and he's also kind of a bit of a resource sink if you don't have your cards don't line up optimally with your like curve right and he comes out he's a solid body has saboteur so he's able just to beat certain like sentinel things shield things so i I think cassian is very solid i think he deserves this kind of middle of the tier list spot yeah he's really great if you can suit him up in in limited because i'm going to keep preaching this but the removal is a premium so uh with a lot less removal floating around being up to suit up Cassian and have Saboteur and keep drawing cards is just a real quick way to end the game with like a wing leader or some kind of upgrade, whether it's like uh, Academy Trading or something else. And then let's look to our final rare leader and our final leader of tier B, Han Solo. Han is Han is pretty Han is pretty interesting. I find that I, I find that he, he he is the kind of enables openers because of his ability to cheat resources he enables openers and limited that aren't like otherwise possible for other decks so you could get you don't have to go rely as heavily on on needing those cheap two costs and you can just play three costs in the first turn now burning through your hand really quickly is a little bit worse if you don't have great ways to like refill it with cards and you're not guaranteed to have those in limited which makes him a little bit weaker but i I think he's very solid and, and the high roll potential with him is really strong, especially if you open up some some very solid three cost cards that your opponent's not able to remove on curve. Something like an Ezra Bridger, right? Which you know by itself on turn two is is just fine, but on turn one and when and then he's going to start looking at the top of your deck, potentially playing cards, action cheating, three four, like that on the first turn. That type of thing is what Han wants to do, and that makes him a little bit stronger in the even even if you only use his ability once to ramp him out. To get him deployed and then attack and play a seven cost, like if you can do that and you're playing the other Han Solo unit or something else that costs seven and the other color you're splashing, that might just be good enough to win a game. Yeah, even if you can drop multiple bodies, even if you don't, I mean, it's great when you have that one seven cost thing you're doing. That'd be Luke. That'd be you. Win. That'd be Han. That'd be Mace Windu. But even playing three cards on a turn is still pretty strong and limited. Yeah, well, the the issue with the seven cost thing is that a lot of the seven costs are rares and legendaries um, yes. so far. So it's harder to get a find like a seven cost that's going to be exactly line up with his ability. But I, I think playing like a three and a four cost or something like that or a six cost is, is just fine also. Yeah, I was I, along, alongside deploying him. I think Heroism, if it had something similar to the ATST, it actually make Han pretty not unlimited, um, yeah. giving it a common really big thing to play on six resources when he deploys would be i think massive so you don't have to get his attack through but also his strongest thing is just being a five cost four six right because he gets to get that free ramp so you just always get to play him on turn four and he's usually outstatting the five cost units other than Monsieur boba fett but yeah i think for me the big thing about him is out of all the rare leaders since he's the top his ability is the easiest and most accessible to use throughout your pool no matter what you get to really take advantage of him but he does end our rare leaders, and we're going to move on to the A tier. And we're going to start with Krennic. These are going to be our, what we think are some of the best leaders here in the A tier. And Krennic's going to start us off. So Krennic is just like, he's just good. He's just solid. Like he he deploys pretty early. He's healing. His ability is passive, so you don't have to spend any extra actions or anything to get value out of it. And one thing that I will say, especially for Krennic and some of these other leaders in this tier that, that they really have going for them, is that a lot of the cards that synergize with them and that are really good with them are common cards. So Krennic has has things like Death Trooper and like Academy Defense Walker, which are really strong limited cards and also really, really strong with Krennic's effect. And 
so he he just has so many access to so many strong cards just in his color that you're most likely going to be able to build a solid deck and use his passive ability to its maximum effect. Corbin basically just nailed it. I was going to bring up like we haven't really talked about the access that these leaders give you to the common pools, like what common cards these give you access to. And I think Villain Blue has good common cards. The the two cost scout back pursuer into the three cost death trooper is an absolutely fine play you're making like you're happy to make that play in most games because you want to damage your boy you can potentially take out their turn one play and then popping it all off with the what was the academy defense walker whatever it is mm -hmm. yeah yeah the and that you guys want to be damaged it's like there's a whole bunch of synergy in the commons with krennic leader himself and so and the and the uncommon yeah, the uncommons in this in his colors too are also really strong. Inferno four being uncommon is a really great opener, really great way to filter through your deck quickly to find your bomb cards. As well, you have like Power of the Dark Side, which is a really strong removal card that is an uncommon as well. So and he's in blue, so you have access to potentially like take down, vanquish, you know, the the other really strong common and uncommon removals, make an opening, etc. So yeah, I, I think Credit is is quite good in, in limited. It's the one who's probably played the most Krennic or one of the most amount of people who've played Krennic. One thing that I really like about Krennic is actually his ability to hit hard because he's giving all of your units an extra damage. They can really close games faster than people think. Um, they can do kind of better trades. So he, he, I think a lot of people look at him as a late game control. I tend to like playing Krennic more mid-range and really leveraging that damage. An interesting observation about this list is that out of our top eight leaders, every pair, color pairing uh, is in that top eight. So as Dudeness had mentioned, oh, there are going to be interesting ways when you have your colors to play, and all of them are either starters or are commons. So that's going to be really accessible in your pool to play them. And now let's look at our next uh, leader, which is Sabine. Sabine. So Sabine... Sabine is interesting if I feel like if you get the cards to support her, like the really aggressive early game, like A Wings, Battlefield Marine, those types of cards, to just start like beating down your opponent. I think she can be really oppressive if you're able to get the right cards for her. But on the flip side, I feel like if you just have an okay deck and you just need a red hero, I feel like she's much worse in that scenario. So it's kind of if you get the cards for her, I think she definitely is one of like the strongest in limited, is my opinion. Especially if you're sealed, if you can make a competent aggro deck with Sabine, it's going to be really hard to stop that. All right, like the, the removal is far less common. Yeah, for sure. And if you just happen to get a wing leader or some other ways to just go space or a bunch of A-wings, like you said, Battlefield Marines, or even and if you end up opening like a Falcon or something, like you can go face a bunch with Sabine and her ability can finish games out. Ping, ping, ping. Her ability yeah. is good amount to like at least five damage over the course of the game. I think the difference with her needing the specific cards and some of the rare leaders that we have below is that a lot of the cards that she needs are commons. Like, you know, like you have a wing or you have Sabine, the unit, which is a, this is, that's an uncommon to be fair, but a, a lot of the good units with her are commons. So you don't necessarily need you know, rares or or legendary cards to really complement her and her abilities, right? It's kind of just, yeah. yeah, you just need good, strong units early that have, like, three attack, typically, and put them in that deck and have a lot of spaceships, if possible, um, and, the, and she'll be okay. And the gorilla attack pod, it can be a nice finisher, too. Yes. Yeah. And she and she works particularly well with all of the just just only hero cards, like Fleet Lieutenant, Wing Leader, Metal Ceremony, General Dodonna, Rebel Pathfinder, all of those just single hero aspect cards are really strong with her and kind of support what she wants to be doing. So those are also make deck building with her a little bit easier. Let's now look at her aggro queen sister who's coming up next, which is Leia. So Leia's kind of trying to do the same thing Sabine is, right? She's looking to try to do a more aggro strategy trying to leverage the fact that her three commons that she has access to, Battlefield Marine and Echo Base Defender specifically, and to a lesser extent, the Alliance Dispatcher, are all kind of bangers. 
And if you can play a deck with multiple copies of those cards and limited, that's usually a good thing. For those uh, that are unfamiliar as well, you can run any number of cards in your pool that you open. So there's no th maximum three limit like in regular constructed. If you get five Battlefield Marines, run them all. Yes. I watch your opponent weep. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's kind of similar to Sabine. I think she she ended up just kind of, they ended up right kind of next to each other. They both support these like these aggro strategies. She does deploy a turn later. But she has a little bit of a more challenging body to remove, which is good. And I think her ability, especially if your opponent's not actively removing your stuff, just lets you get that guaranteed damage that Sabine does not give you. Or she gives you a little bit with Sabine with her ping. But Leia guarantees those unit swings. You get value out of your units before your opponent gets to remove them or deal with them in any way. So I like that aspect of her as well. Where Leia really wants you to build around the rebel trait, our next leader, Tarkin, really wants you to build around the Imperial trait. Both of them actually really play into what their color pairings are trying to do, where green heroism really tries to go wide, and so Leia lets you attack with two rebels. Tarkin lets you go tall, which green villain is trying to do, by putting an experience counter on one of your Imperials. Yeah, he's, a, he's that is a great point. He's kind of like, like a value engine, Tarkin is. He's like, it's really difficult like we've already talked about, you know, lack of removal, whatever. And so units just having plus one, plus one sometimes is the difference between them getting to swing an additional time or additional two times or make it a favorable trade versus them not being able to do that. Right. So it's like it, the plus one, plus one counters that he gives are just a huge deal. He also deploys at five and then he also is just giving counters for free. Then no, no need to spend resources. And he's just got seven HP. So he's a lot pretty annoying to remove. So yeah, Tarkin, I think, is, is kind of a powerhouse in, in Limited. Yeah, those plus one, plus one counters really make the math weird sometimes. I think the best thing about Tarkin, too, is the fact that you can put all your things on one unit to go really tall, or you can put them on a bunch of units, like one at a time. Like each round, you put on a different unit. So that way, if your opponent has like a Vanquish or a Takedown, like they can't just really? kill the unit you've gone all in, or Waylay, exactly. Yeah, like, like if you're not playing as yellow, you can kind of just stack it on one thing but if they have other removal that like wants to have a specific hp value or whatever you can stack it on one guy so it's like a lot of uh versatility with his ability depending on uh, what your opponent has for removal it's also yeah, a little yeah. harder to build decks that curve out properly and kind of how you want them to do and so that paying having that extra one resource ability just allows you to kind of fill your turn up if you need it and i mean we haven't spoken that he also gives you access to Super laser technician. I and hear overwhelming that. barrage. That's a pretty good card. Yeah, the, the color pairing that he provides is is one of the one of the best in the game and, and provides a lot of just really strong green villainy and and whatnot cards. So yeah, very good card. Let's move over now to our first of the starter leaders, which are only allowed to be played in the pre-release. Luke Skywalker. Our boy Luke. Well, as it turns out. Giving shields to your units is pretty good. Yeah, I feel like he's kind of like in the same, like similar vein to his Tarkin, where he's got this like one cost resource sync ability, but instead of plus one plus one counters, we've got the the shield counters, shield. and shields are really obnoxious in in limited in particular when there's like way fewer ways to deal with them and get around them. So. If Luke's able to set up even just some cheap units with shields early and that they're just going to stick on the board for a long time. Yeah, he and and not to mention that he has a really good body at 4-7, deploys at 6, and he has two on his unit side, has two of the strongest traits in the game with Force and Rebel. So he synergizes with a lot of your cards. He's just kind of a, yeah, just very good, very strong card overall. Yeah, I feel like we're in, in in Premier, Luke's ability is a defensive ability. In Limited, it's actually like an offensive ability, being able to trade into units and keep yours alive. It's kind of like a free removal spell almost, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Let's now look at our last A-tier leader, Boba Fett. Are we surprised to see Boba Fett only in the A-tier? Yes. So, some of us are. <laughs> Yeah, Boba Fett is, is incredibly powerful, and we talked a bit about in our premiere video about just how much of a powerhouse he is in that format, right? He And then he brings a lot of that same potential to, to Limited as well, just, be, just because of how good his stats are, 
how flexible his ability is to just uh, just set up turns where where you you just get so ahead on the board it's like almost impossible for them to come back and and then the fact that if you somehow manage to get any form of ramp i feel like this is one of the best leaders to get out early because the game is just it, it just locks down the game like the game is over right if you get him out on like turn three so all of those things combined lead to him being at a really strong leader limited carbon nailed it I think my problem with him, why I had him a little bit lower than everyone else, still in A tier though, was his ability is just a little bit harder to leverage in limited, and I value that in my S tier leaders, which we can look at right now. Our first S tier leader, number two overall, Darth Vader. Our boy Vader. This guy is an absolute monster. Being able to ping off stuff to finish it off is just top. Is an absolute top tier ability. You. It, I don't think, I mean, top two billions in the game basically is what we're saying right now, right? So, yeah, it's pretty good. Well, that's what and you guys when, said, not what I said. <laughs> when he comes out, he 5'8 is just, you can't, how do you, how do you stop that, right? He's just, he's a, he's a powerhouse in every single way. If yeah. you get to deploy him, you're most likely going to take over the game. And if you can get the ability to ramp with this guy, you're sealed you're you're gonna win games straight up yeah just the, his deploy his side his unit side is one of the few leaders that just like if you don't answer it is gonna end the game all on its own right like he, he and, and and he is so difficult to deal with that eight health is so annoying and he, with the five attack right anything that's trading into it it's just dying right so he's wiping your board while he's still getting to attack face and he's doing two damage every time he attacks. It's just, yeah, if you get to that deploy side, he is capable of just, you know, locking down the game almost by himself. Yeah, my biggest thing with him, I had him the lowest on our list, was the fact that he's not very flexible. Like, he, you, he can, he, you really want to pair him with green for the ramp to get him out earlier. And if you're not in green, you don't have the ramp. Like, he's, in my opinion, significantly worse. I actually had Luke above him because I think Luke is better paired with any of the colors. Same thing with Boba Fett. So Vader is actually my fifth leader overall. I think he's still a great leader to have if you have the correct deck for him. I think he's more color paired specific with green than some of the other leaders up here. They did a great job with the thematic impact that he has when he comes to the board. You're really in fear. And the last leader we have in our S tier, our number one overall, is Jin, which is amazing because in our other list, she's near the bottom. And in this, she takes our number one spot. Why is it that she is what we consider the best hero, the best leader in limited? Because value trading is king and limited, and she is the best value trader, period. And just so people know, for who might not know what value trading means, it just means that when your unit is large enough to attack another unit and stay alive, you get the, the kill for free on that unit, and that's what he means by value trade here. Because, and yeah, she... now your unit is now is sticking around to do mm -hmm. other stuff, potentially trade off and kill another unit and so like now if, you've generated board advantage by her ability for free for just example by... if 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 both people played a battlefield marine on turn one and you were going first and you had Jin, you used her ability to kill their battlefield marine with your battlefield marine yours would still live and that's what the scenario that we're talking about here. yeah so now you have a three one and they have nothing and so you yeah. and it's really hard to come back in this game, especially in limited. And if your opponent can do that twice, it's just like, it, it's, it feels really bad. Probably the worst part about Jin is her color pairing, which is arguably the worst color pairing in the game, uh, but she still makes up for it despite that. Her her comments aren't the worst, right? She has the 3-2 Lothal Insurgent. The Rogue Operative is pretty good with Jin, but I really like rogue operative more when you can consistently go first to make sure you get the rate off and get that value trade if you can and the the liberator gunship three four ambush in space is pretty reasonable too so it's like her commons aren't actually really all that bad it's like mostly the color pairing sadness is from cards like vanguard ace taking up the uncommon slot that you're just never ever going to be playing yeah well, and I'll say, I think what kind of sets her apart from these other leaders like Luke and Tarkin that also enable like these value trades is that 
hers is immediate, doesn't take an action, and it's free. So if you manage to build a deck that's like focused on you know playing cards on curve, you get a lot more value out of her ability than the, those other leaders that require you to spend that resource, right? So it lets you maintain tempo, keep playing bigger cards while still making those really good value trades that we're talking about. She is a yeah, tempo queen in a in a way too, right? Because her ability is just baked into the action you're already doing in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And those are extremely advantageous in trying to keep initiative and stuff like that. And she yeah. wants to have initiative because she wants to be picking which trades she wants to do first to maximize the value. And well, then her her flip side, her leader side, 4-7, right? Like, that's pretty solid. And yeah, giving that ability to everything, which means now your ambush units get that ability when they come into play, that's really huge. So that bumps up the cards like the Liberator Gunship like I talked about earlier. Now we can trade into something potentially live where it wouldn't have before, you know? Now it kills off a strafey, the strafing gunship and lives with the ambush. So just her, just the, the ability to generate so much value with her is just incredible. And in limited value is king. Let us know in the comments below where we got it wrong and where you guys would put some of these leaders. Hit that like button if you want to hear more content. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time on Outmaneuver. Maneuver.